hang on, what are bastions for? I'm gonna spend about a minute or so briefly introducing them to make this video like a little bit more accessible outside of the speedrunning community. If you want, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen. I promise I won't get mad at you. I'm gonna assume you know how to beat Minecraft the game you need Eyes of Ender and Blaze Rods. So the meta in 1.16 speedrunning is to travel to the nether, find a bastion, and then get pearls from that. You also get a bunch of other resources like string, obsidian, and so on. There's four kinds of bastions. You have stables, treasure, housing, and uh, bridge. Yes, that's the last one. There's a million different routes for all the bastions, but the premise is roughly the same. You anger the pigs, you mine the gold while they're angry, and then you feed them the gold and they barter with you, and you loot their chests while they're distracted. It's, it's quite cruel, really. And it's the speedrunner's job to get in, get out, get to the fortress as fast as possible. By nature, Stables is the most random bastion. It has a bunch of differently generating sections of it, which all contain gold. So you could get a lot of gold, or you could get completely rolled and get none. Treasure can be a little scary, but it's pretty average in terms of speed. It does have a mob spawner at the bottom of it, which can make finding the fortress of Pyre quite annoying. But we'll see how that affects things later on. Housing is typically regarded as the best bastion to find in your runs. It's not as fast as double triple stables, but it's a lot more consistent and contains the same amount of gold blocks every time. And of course, how could I forget bridge? Bridge is the easiest bastion. It has a big chalice of gold, easily accessible. It used to be regarded as the slowest bastion type until some relatively recent development, and you get a hell of a lot of gold blocks and loot from it. Let's start with the simplest question. Which of the four bastions is the fastest? The metric we'll be using is the mean of all bastion splits from this season of MCSR Ranked. By the way, Ranked is just a mod which allows players to compete 1v1 on the same seeds, same RNG, and then they get ELO for it. It's a treasure trove of clean data, so that's why I'm using it. Let's jump in. So it looks like our ranking goes housing first, bridge, treasure, and stables last, with the difference between the slowest and fastest being about 30 seconds. Interestingly, both the RSG world record and unofficial ranked world record use treasure, only the third fastest bastion. More on that later in the video. All right, cool. Problem solved, right? After collecting this data and pondering it for a while, I came to the realization that even this question has no simple answer. The first issue is that this data just reflects which bastions are easiest to learn. This is because it's taken from across the entire player base. The second issue is that we don't see the impact of a bastion type on the rest of the run, other than traveling to the fortress. These are both things we can solve if you just stick with me, and we can start uncovering some truth. I'm going to expand that graph along the rank axis because apparently I can do that. So. Here we are. The letters above every single bar, they represent the type of bastion it is, so B for bridge, H for housing, and so on. And from only a glance, we can actually see that the order of what's fastest and what's slowest, it doesn't really change too much, except down in the depths of coal. This is clearly a result of bridge being so much easier to play than all the other bastions. So players who are worse end up being relatively better at bridge. Conversely, at these lower ranks, stables is far and away the slowest. This is likely due to how difficult it is to learn with all of its variations and all the possible routes you can take through the whole thing. You need to dedicate quite a bit of time to learn this bastion, and even then, it's quite a high learning curve. So this all makes sense and that's well and good, but for the rest of this video, we only want to be looking at data which is produced by top level play. This is where we're going to find our answers. At this elo, there's only a 20 second difference between the best and worst bastion, but that's still pretty significant, especially given that we're talking about the mean average. So with all of this data in mind, we can pretty confidently confirm that housing is still the best bastion. But this isn't quite the full picture. So far in this video, we've been looking at the segment of time between the bastion entry and the fortress entry but bastions can provide different amounts of gold and chest loot. Variance in explosive count and obby count doesn't really show itself in the bastion split, so we need to look beyond that. 
here's how every bastion type compares with the post bastion split. Excuse the fact that I kind of fucked up this graph, but we can see that stables actually gives the player the best chance in the fortress and beyond that. I expect this because of recent stables routing developments, with triple to gap just garnering a ton of gold. With all the chests as well, runners are pretty much guaranteed 20 obsidian. That said, the difference between bridge and stables is definitely negligible. Altogether, this does put bridge in a spot to be the best bastion, but we've been thinking about this kind of naively. This is really where the fun begins. Right, so what did that tell us? Well, quite a few things. Firstly, bridge, with housing just behind it, is the most consistent to route by measure of standard deviation, which makes sense. Secondly, all bastion types are pretty similar pace-wise when considering the fastest 10% of cases, falling within a 10 second range. Thirdly, stables is just ass in the average case compared to the others. And lastly, treasure has a lot of variance due to sometimes needing to mine the mob spawner or guessing a direction for the fortress. In the worst 10% of routes, it's far slower than the other bastions. Now, I did promise that we'd take a look at the ranked and RSG world records and how they utilize treasure. This is Drip701. He gets the bastion achievement at 133 and ends up entering the fortress at 334. This gives us a bastion split of just over 2 minutes and puts it in the top 5% of treasure splits. This is nothing insane, but keep in mind the fact that we're comparing it to ranked seeds played by only the very, very best players. Silver's ranked 604 is naturally pretty insane though. He enters the structure at 1 minute flat and gets the fort advancement at 247. Already at the spawner too, so it's even better than my numbers can show. This is a 147 split, which is basically as fast as it gets in ranked. Out of the 830 Neverite treasure splits that I have, it's just in the top 5, period. This next topic is something that I've been wanting to find out about for a very long time. Is there a certain bastion which kills more players? For those curious, I define death rate as the number of deaths between bastion entry and obtaining a post-bastion achievement, divided by the number of death opportunities. A death opportunity is any time you enter a bastion, unless the opponent ends the game through forfeiting or winning while you're still inside the bastion split. So here's our plot. Of course, for every bastion type, death rate falls of rank, as it should be. Across the ranks, stables or treasure is always the most lethal type, whereas one of bridge or housing is always the safest, 4 percentage points below them, on average. The core rank sample size isn't big enough to consider really, so we're going to move past that. But to me, the trend seems to be such that lower elo players struggle more with treasure, probably with crossbow piglins and the bit of parkour you have to do to begin your route. Once you're experienced with getting to the trading hole though, treasure isn't nearly as threatening. Stables on the other hand is always a little dangerous though when heading down a gap without gold or performing one of the many new routes that top players have been doing. So I think that's why better players would find stables more challenging. Of course, do drop your observations in the comments if you disagree or if you have something else to bring up. By the way, after I get this video finally out, I'll throw this data on the analysis bot for you to make your own direct bastion death rate comparisons with your rank. It would be a crime to end up this video without thanking everyone for all the support on the playoff stat segment. I've been your host, Maddie, and I hope you have a nice day. Yo, okay, chat, wow. if we can't get Natty to 1,000 by the end of the day, there's what, like 4 million people here? There's can a we problem, get, it's not 1K. Can we get Natty? I think my jaw was probably on the floor when I refreshed my channel and my sub count literally doubled in 10 seconds. It was so very overwhelming in the most positive way possible. Anyways, I'll be reading every comment, so as ever, leave your opinions, feedback, and observations about this video down below. I'll see you on the next one.